Hello, and welcome to the Reselling Report podcast for today, Monday, August 3rd, 2020. I'm your host, Anne Eckhart, and every weekday I upload the Reselling Report to update you on the day's retail and e-commerce news, including the latest from eBay, Amazon, Etsy, and Poshmark. Whether you are listening on YouTube or your favorite podcast site, make sure you're subscribed. And now let's get on with today's show. Well, happy Monday, everyone, and happy new month. It is August. Can you believe it? We are over halfway through 2020. And I think a lot of us would like to just press the fast forward button and get to 2021, where there's hopefully a coronavirus vaccine, more medications we can get out of this pandemic that continues to sweep across the world and of course is raging here in the US. So wherever you live in the States, um, the effects are of course different. Some states are rolling back on opening up due to surges and, of course, the healthcare systems being overwhelmed, which is what this is all about, making sure that the healthcare systems are not overwhelmed so that they can not only take care of those with COVID-19, but they can take care of people who have other things because people are still having heart attacks and strokes and cancer and car accidents and all the things. And we need um, our healthcare system to be able to manage those things. So continue to wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands, Three easy things that we can all do to hopefully get life somewhat normal. Although with schools opening up here in the next month, some schools are already starting back. Uh, I don't know. I feel like we should take bets on how long do you think the schools are going to stay open. I feel like two weeks and then we'll start to see closures again because of outbreaks. Anyway, uh, let's start the day off with some retail headlines. Under Armour warns that sales will decline as much as 25% over the rest of the year. Yikes. Um, At home, however, uh, their CEO says they could grow to more than 600 stores as sales soar during the pandemic. At home is a very large home decor store. I kind of liken it to if you took home goods and multiplied it by 50, that's an at home. We have an at home store here and they actually went into a vacant uh, part of the mall where JCPenney was. Uh, So That's interesting. They have around 200 or so stores right now, and they could boost 400 because people are apparently shopping for home decor like crazy, but not buying Under Armour shirts. Yikes. Um, And uh, retail rents plummet across New York City as America's glitzy shopping districts turn into ghost towns, according to an article over on CNBC. Um, Rents are in a free fall. In the U.S., certainly you will see that what's once perceived as a luxury block and is no longer exclusively luxury. Average asking rents along 16 major retail corridors in Manhattan declined for the 11th consecutive quarter, falling to $688 per square foot in the second quarter. And the drop marked in Manhattan retail rent was the first time since 2011 that prices dropped below $700 a square foot. So, you know, things start in New York and LA and they trickle down to the rest of the country. So retail New York is suffering and brick and mortar all over the country uh, continues to suffer as people stay home and shop online. Who wants some Instagram reselling drama to start their day? You? Hey, me too. Here's some. <laughs> so over on Instagram, an account called Diet Prada, which has a very large following and a Patreon account where you can get even more scoop about what's going on. Uh, They have now posted about Daniel Bernstein at We Wore What. Now, you may remember this account, uh, We Wore What. We talked about it a month or so ago when a reseller uh, named Jade from Fashion Without Trashin had purchased a bunch of sample items at a thrift store from this company. Now, at the time, she didn't know they were samples. She just got a great deal on items at the thrift store, but then was contacted by the company, specifically directly by Daniel Bernstein uh, in regards and saying, oh my gosh, those were samples. They can't be out. They were already listed on um, Poshmark by Jade. They went back and forth. It got into a big argument. It was all over Instagram. They eventually worked it out. Uh, But so this is the same person as that. So according to uh, Diet Prada, Influencer throws her team under the bus after getting called out for copying an Etsy seller. Daniel Bernstein was in the process of reproducing what she claimed were vintage shorts, but an Australian Etsy shop owner's receipts tell a different story. Uh, And the post reads, uh, Daniel Bernstein, aka We Wore What, posted a picture wearing a pair of simple marigold shorts. Woke up to so many DMs about these shorts. They're vintage gym shorts from the 90s, and I'm already remaking them for my brand, the influencer said, adding that she always finds inspiration in the vintage pieces she collects. But Australian Etsy shop Art Garments 
U A U. Yeah, art garments A U. Receipts tell a different story. Since 2011, Grace Corby has been collecting vintage and selling curated finds online. I hand sort, source, shoot, edit, and upload, measure, and describe, hand wrap, and post each piece myself. It's a labor of love and never really feels like work, she said. Corby's only non-vintage item is a pair of simple elastic weight shorts, which are clearly listed as pre-order. After an uptick in sales when her shop was tagged in the comments of We Wore What's post, she searched her past orders, finding Bernstein had purchased two pairs on November 11th, 2019. As with the chain mask uh, that we were talked about, we'll talk about that in a second, uh, they were accused of stealing some masks. Um... The originality of this item, the apparent conscious choice to exploit a smaller business. We all know fashion often references vintage, so I'm not sure why my pairs were chosen as a template and not a true 90s gym sort, Corby said. Her own shorts are based off a three-pound Berlin flea market find worn until the waist lost its stretch. I took what remained to a local seamstress with some amendments, longer, wider legs for a bit more coverage, stretchier waist. Many designers reference vintage and always have. The best transform it by adding their own flavor, even to basic items. There are ethical ways to use vintage in the inspiration and design process, tweaking and personalization, ensuring you're not stiffening credit and revenue from a small Aussie shop. Bernstein since updated her caption. These are from Etsy, and I totally thought they were vintage, but they are made to order. Someone on my team ordered them for me a while back. I will not be making them. Odd, considering it still says she's collect her own vintage pieces. Some free advice for Danielle. Save yourself the scandal and just visit a thrift shop or flea market yourself. So, of course, this is getting shared all over the place. Again, um, this person got a lot of traction back when um, Jade with Fashion Without Trash and that whole scandal started. But there's yet another post about um, Danielle over on the Diet Prada's page, and it says, The Streisand Effect, a case study of an influencer scandal. We spill some major tea about the fallout after the second wind slash we wore what post that Danielle probably doesn't want you to know. And yes, it involves her lawyers. Now, this says it's a Patreon exclusive uh for the whole story, but it does start by saying there's a paradoxical phenomenon that happens when someone tries to suppress information. Often attempting to censor or remove that information has inadvertent consequences of drawing further attention to it. It's called the Streisand effect and countless politicians, government, and even Beyonce have fallen victim to it. And influencer Daniel Bernstein to that list now, who is the latest to use their privilege of money to throw a lawsuit around and cry defamation. Can it be that simple? Now, You have to go over to Patreon to get the full story, although there is another post over on the Diet uh, Prada's page that shows the two masks, one from the original creator and then one from um, the We Wore What's site, looking that it's almost an exact copy. So Diet Prada apparently has the scoop on some drama. She does have a Patreon now, and it is, let me see the cost. Subscribe to our Patreon. Is this going to be worth it for me to subscribe? $5 a month. And, or you can get $10 or $30 a month. But there's all kinds of things. I don't know. But yeah, lots of drama being shared by Diet Prada over on Instagram, specifically regarding the We Wore What site. But she also has a lot of other um, posts as well with drama in the fashion community. If you want to check it out, I'll link her in the show notes. Turning now to eBay, according to their Facebook page, if you're thinking of taking a break this summer, you can use their multi-user account access to grant secure access so others can help you run your business while you take time out. And it leads to a portal over on their site that talks about how you can basically allow someone to access your account and employee uh, to run your business while you are away. Now, this is something that's been difficult in the past. I myself had an issue with it a few years ago because I had accessed a friend's account They had authorized me to to go in and fix some things. They were a new seller on eBay. And then they got in trouble and eBay traced uh, my IP address back to having access to the account. And I think my account was suspended for a few days because of that. Uh, But this now allows you to authorize a third person or second person, I guess, (laughs) a second person to access your account and to run 
your business while you are away. Now, this is good too if you have, you know, a spouse, they have a different computer, a different uh, account than you. So just a way to protect yourself if more than one person has access to your eBay account. Um, might want to go over and check that out. Also on the eBay for Business Facebook page, they have another seller story as part of their 25th anniversary celebration. You can read how Canadian entrepreneur Adrian Lavoy, I'm not sure I probably mispronounced that, I'm sorry, scaled his business operations from his parents' basement to a thriving small business selling sneakers on eBay. So another interesting story to read. And a new seller news announcement. Who picked it? This month marks the first time eBay has seen NBA trading cards surpass MLB in sales. Find out more about the uptick in trading cards from Jordan Sweetenham in our latest seller announcement. So you can go over there and read about um, the card sales, basketball doing better than baseball right now, which makes sense because basketball is actively playing. Baseball is trying to play, but they keep getting shut down because of COVID-19 outbreaks, but it also uh, has a list of cards to watch, the top 12 players to look out for, and of course, the hottest trading card on the market right now is the tops card for Dr. Fauci, who threw out the first pitch at the National um, Baseball Game. Tops had a one-day printing and sale of that card. It went like hotcakes, and now some people are trying to sell them for up to $10,000 off on eBay. I don't think that's going to work, but yeah, that Dr. Fauci trading card <laughs> Definitely bringing some traffic to the trading card business. And one more thing from eBay uh, on their eBay for Business Facebook page. It said, in case you missed it, we're happy to announce that sellers registered for managed payments can now donate a portion of their sales to registered charities. Sellers can choose to donate between 10 to 100% of a sale to charity, and you will get credited an equal percentage of your fees. So if you run charity sales over on eBay, that's good news. Uh, if you are in managed payments, you can continue to do that. If you are an Etsy seller, I'm sure you get frustrated with the site a lot, the way we all get frustrated with the sites that we sell on. There's a new post over in the Etsy community forums titled, Old People Get Irritated So Easily. And this caught my eye, so I thought I'd share it with you. The post reads, you thought I was going to pick on old people. I find myself getting irritated. I'm an old person so easily by Etsy lately. I try to let it go, knowing it consistently happens, and it's still an easier solution than starting my own website. But come on, the way sellers get treated, if it weren't for great sellers, there would be no Etsy. Constantly making us opt out of new things like off-site ads or pattern sites previously or free shipping. If they are so great, let buyers opt in, not be forced to stay or forced to find a way out. Next, shops not being indexed. Okay, sometimes there's a reason, but lately, listings changing to auto-renew, and not being given an option or default to manual or not have it consistently change. Customer support, enough said there. Constant changes for change sake. No reason for some changes. Listing description moving around or being hidden from plain view, etc. Fonts and colors and so on. I don't mind keeping it fresh, but it needs to make sense. Testing, testing, testing on the live platform. The forum community is great at helping other sellers and customers out, but many have different page views and features based on what test you may or may not be in. Enacting code changes without proper testing, like dropping a decimal point and massively overcharging for labels. Of course, that happened last week. Sounds like Etsy has uh, resolved that one. I hope for those of you who sell there, maybe got overcharged for label. Not allowing us to save an edited version of inactive or sold listings, but forcing us to pay 20 cents to save it. The tracking issues for some sellers, they enter a tracking number, it says delivered. Is it fixable? Are they going to? And total lack of explanation or assurance by Etsy when an issue arises. Tell us what is happening or why. Tell us you're working on fixing some of the issues seller raise, raises. Tell us why we don't have customer support. Tell me why I can't use emojis in the forums. Some communication would go a long way. So just a list of things that a lot of sellers are irritated with about Etsy. So if you want to go over and contribute to that conversation, it will be linked in the show notes below. Um, yeah, Etsy's definitely made a lot of changes in the past year or so. But on the other hand, if you're selling handmade, home decor um, items, those items are doing really, really well on Etsy right now. Etsy's had amazing growth. So you hope when sites have issues uh, that in the long run that they will work themselves out. Because again, if you are a crafter, you make items, uh, Etsy is definitely a place to have your business on right now. There are quite a few new posts over on the Poshmark Facebook 
page, including trend spotted, writing special messages on your outgoing hashtag posh packages. And it shows people writing things like um, rise, shine, and hold your head high. Rise and shine and hold your head high, but they wrote it on three different packages. Are they all going to the same person? That's interesting. Other people writing joy. I made it. Hashtag posh love. I don't know. Do you want to take a colorful marker and write on your Poshmark packages? Have you ever done that? Another post says we chatted with three three fashionistas who love shopping on hashtag Poshmark Canada. They shared tips and tricks on how to navigate the app to find the best deals. That's an interesting um, story if you are in Canada to shop and sell over on Poshmark. And there is a, in case you missed it, last week's app chat revealed two game-changing app updates coming your way soon. Drum roll, please. Packing slips and bulk printing. Ship, ship, hooray. Packing slips will help you stay organized so you know exactly what you're shipping off. Bulk printing will allow you to streamline your shipping process. And a bonus, we're adding a filter to your My Sales report to find out which items need to be shipped. Now that is a live stream recording. So if you would like to go over and learn more about that. Um, yeah, I love a packing slip because when I ship on eBay, my dad usually ship packages the orders, but I have to get the label and everything ready. So I like having a packing slip to give to him so he doesn't um, mess up and accidentally ship the wrong package. It's with the label. So if they get separated, um, we know exactly which box it's supposed to go on. And one last story to share with you today in regards to the post office. There's a new post over on the e-commerce bites blog titled USPS says treasury is not the boss of me. Just because the United States treasury is requiring the USPS to provide information about confidential negotiated contracts with its top customers doesn't mean the USPS is ceding control, the Postal Service indicated in a statement on Thursday. Congress authorized the USPS to borrow $10 billion from the U.S. Treasury Department as part of the CARES Act, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. Because Congress authorized the loans, some believe the Treasury Department is overreaching in its demands spelled out in terms of the loan agreement it negotiated with the Postal Service. The USPS said it's providing the Treasury with information regarding its costs, revenues, and overall financial position. This includes providing Treasury under strict terms of confidentiality with those contracts that generate the most revenue for the Postal Service. The Washington Post reported on the terms yesterday. Note that the newspaper is owned by Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, which has negotiated service agreements with the post office. The newspaper pointed out that the USPS already hired outside consultants to evaluate the NSAs uh, to make sure that they are profitable and fairly priced. The USPS took issue with the article, stating that providing this information is merely an acknowledgement of the fact that Treasury has been designated by Congress as the lender for the Postal Service, and it therefore has a legitimate interest under certain circumstances in understanding those factors that affect our current and projected financial position. It also stated, contrary to insinuations made in the Washington Post article, nothing in these terms confers upon Treasury any role whatsoever in Postal Service pricing, management, or strategy. Some members of Congress also criticized the terms of the loan yesterday, including the provision limiting how the USPS could use the funds. In a statement, the USPS didn't mention the press release issued yesterday by the Congresswoman and men, but it did address their concerns, writing, other conditions, such as the requirement that borrowed funds only be used for operating expenses and not for capital expenses, were expressly mandated by Congress in the language of the CARES Act. The following excerpt of the CARES Act bill confirms the requirement about limits was mandated by Congress and its um, additional borrowing authority. The Postal Service may borrow up to $10 million. It's to be used for operating expenses, not for outstanding debt. And the Secretary of the Treasury may lend up the amount um, described at the request of the Postal Service upon terms and conditions manually agreed by the Secretary and the Post Office. So, We've been talking about the post office's financial trouble and their disagreements with the Trump administration. Um, Yeah, they are in deep financial trouble and they have been for years. So another um, issue regarding the $10 billion, just making sure that they're using it for uh, expenses and not debt and the tie of having to disclose who their top Um, customers are. And again, Jeff Bezos, Amazon, this is something the Trump administration has said. Now, Trump and Bezos 
are do not get along. So uh, Trump has been very critical that Amazon gets such great deals from the post office for postage. And he says the post office should charge Amazon more. So it's just a big old political thing. But yeah, anyway, that's the latest from the post office. I'm sure it is not the last time that we will be discussing um, their struggles and their fight with Washington. And that's a wrap on today's show. If you listened on YouTube, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment. Remember that you can also listen to the podcast via Anchor, Spotify, Apple, and more. Check out the show notes for links to the articles I referenced. And if you want to learn how to make money on eBay and YouTube the way I do, check out my books over on Amazon. My Amazon store is also linked. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.